This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. One that everybody wants me. Austin three sixteen says I just ripped your ass. This is my iron. You're gonna acknowledge me. Everybody, welcome to the current state of WWE. I have Anthony DeMarco back with me this week, and we're going to talk about one topic here. It, of course, will spiderweb off into probably a few different uh, avenues, but we're going to talk about TV 14 and just going with the assumption that WWE is going to go forward with TV 14. Now, there's still the possibility, of course, that this was just something talked about, but not actually going to happen. It seems as if it will, so we'll take that path. But, uh, Anthony, how you doing? You excited for this one? Oh, I am really excited, man. I touched a bit about it on it on uh, WWE Retro because I just had so many thoughts to try and get out. Obviously, like tonight, we can dive into it a bit more uh, in depth. But I just got some quick th- thoughts on it uh, when I recorded uh, Retro back on Friday. But yeah, all in all, I think that we're both going to have a lot to say on this because I'm pretty sure back when this was our What If show, we talked about what if WWE would ever go away from tv uh from pg and uh we both said we never thought it was going to happen because you know of optics the current climate of our world the shareholders publicly traded company and all that but now it seems like maybe it's not like as imminent as we thought maybe it's not as early as the upcoming um monday night raw but as you mentioned before we started recording here pat mcafee certainly left an easter egg on raw or on smackdown referencing it And I do think at this point, I never thought we'd be saying this, but I really think it's a question of when and not if WWE will be going back to TV 14. It's not. Yeah. But I mean, it seems as if, like you said, with the Easter egg uh, dropped with major news outlets reporting it. I mean, it's not just your typical clickbait wrestling, you know, uh, website. These are credible sources like Sports Illustrated, Pro Wrestling Insider, you know, Wrestling Inc. uh, I think Sports Kita and Bleacher Report. I mean, you go down the list and these are major news outlets. So this is something that is not just being stirred up by the Internet community. It's actually legit and it does seem like it's going to happen. And again, it could happen as soon as next month or uh, tonight. It could happen as soon as you know a month two months i don't know but let's go forward with that path and assume they're doing it before we get into the the benefits of that and and some drawbacks there are some drawbacks what do you think uh, you know caused this what what do you think initiated this change for wwe what what could it be that they're like yeah after 14 years let's go back to tv 14 why do you think they're doing this Well, look, obviously, all of my thoughts are based purely in speculation. I haven't heard anything or read anything about it. But the first thing that jumped into my head was Vince McMahon is in such a bad way right now that he wants to do something to deflect away from him and his personal problems right now and all the accusations about, I guess, sexual misconduct would be the best way to put it. And I think that that would be the first idea that has jumped into my mind Because he knows that he's going to win back so many fans that probably walked away from the product 15 years ago when they did originally go to PG content. And, you know, I have so many friends in, let's say, the age bracket of you and I, more like anywhere from the late 20s to late 30s, that really have always said, like, oh, it's not like it used to be. Now it's meant for kids. And I think that if he actually commits to this and putting it out there, he's going to have a lot more people flock back to the WWE product because of that mature content. And the other thing that I have speculated on, and again, I don't have any facts to prove this in any which way, but I wonder if the product and the ratings have been taking a hit since WrestleMania this year. You know, we had just been talking about it off the air about how the entire world championship picture with both titles being on Roman Reigns and he, him being on WWE programming extremely sparingly is really starting to affect the product. And I wonder if this is their way to try and correct that and get this thing back on course by having people just tune in and say like, okay, it's TV 14. I got to watch now. And not to say that they're going to do, do uh, well with that because, you know, yes, it, it expands the parameters that they can push, But at the same time, it still depends on how good the creative is. Like, you can't just, like, push, like, 
more edgy content with no logic behind it. It also has to be well thought out. So I think that another part of this is definitely by them trying to get like a shock value of people just trying to just tuning in just to see what they may do. If it is Vince McMahon just using this in part to deflect the attention away from himself and onto WWE itself and look at what we're doing, guys, don't look over here, look over there. That is, I mean, if that's actually a part of the strategy, that is, that is such short term thinking, like not seeing the forest through the trees. Like that's just, I mean, I I think that's a very poor idea for them to do or Vince to do. And, and honestly, it seems a bit, um, self-serving once again to get the attention off of him and on to WWE. But, uh, you know, beyond that, if, if that is the case on that, then I'll shame on them. But this, as you said, the key phrase there is well thought out. You can't just, the, you know, they, they open the show uh, for the first TV 14 show and you know, someone's just cursing right away. And it's like, you know, I, they need to have something in place where they were, you know, they're sitting in the production meeting and they're saying, okay, guys, Here's the PG parameters. What could we do with this story if we had TV 14? Now it does. It opens up a whole lot of a whole lot more personality or a whole lot more possibility rather. And I don't. Here's what I don't need. I don't need a whole bunch of sex on my TV uh, with wrestling. I don't need that. We, I don't need the women going back to you know Playboy pillow fights. Imagine that. I mean, like imagine they just go back to like you know like you know 1999. I don't think they'll do that. But I don't need a whole lot of that and super scandalous stuff. What I'm looking for with TV 14 is from a creative standpoint. Like I'm looking for. Uh, blood when applicable like i'm tired of hell in a cell matches not having blood when there should be blood especially hardcore matches and things i don't need it all the time but there's so many times it would be a useful tool and they don't have it uh, so blood i would love uh, uh, some cursing would be would be nice and getting away from the the kind of family friendly stuff like the, the silly storylines and the bad humor that they've brought forth with uh with a lot of the groups and, and, you know, but anyway, that's what I'm looking forward to. I, I don't need a whole lot of cursing and sex personally. I mean, there's more that they can do with TV 14. Yeah, of course. And I think that just like simple things of like not having a match be put together because another guy put ketchup on another guy's suit, you know, like mm. just stuff like that, just simple things, more adult logic to it. And again, like it doesn't have to be like, oh, bra and panties matches and sexifying women. Like I saw like this uh, this meme the other day of like, oh, I can't wait for WWE go- to go back to the good old days with TV 14 programming. And then it's just a screenshot of two girls coming to the rings. And, like, the name bar just says the lesbians. Oh, like my God. That. <laughs> or HLA. Remember Eric Bischoff's HLA? Yeah, HLA. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, like, look, <laughs> it is funny, but not in, like, a ha-ha, like, knee-slapping away. More in, like, a funny of, like, oh, my God, I can't believe they actually did that. That's so bad. Mm-hmm. So I don't need to see that anymore. And I, as I've been touched on on my retro show, like, I think one of the things I'd be most intrigued to see if they do go back or when they go back to TV 14 is how they will deal with the women's division. Because aside from like Lita versus Trish and maybe Trish versus um, Victoria back in the early days of uh, ruthless aggression, you know, the women didn't really get a fair kick at the can in the TV 14 parameters. They were always just like, okay, uh, sexified, objectified, bra and panties matches, you know, bikini off, like schoolgirl, battle royal, whatever you want, playboy pillow fight, like you mentioned. I would like to see how they go with the women in just mature storylines, but keeping them as is actual wrestlers and keeping them on the same footing as the men. And I think that that's something we've never seen before. Like, we've seen how they book the men's matches and the men's division in the confines of WWE TV 14. But as far as the women's division, it really, well, for one, there wasn't really a women's division back when it was TV 14. It was basically like Lita, Trish, and sometimes Victoria and everyone else. And I'm curious to see, like, how are they going to book Ronda Rousey and Bianca Belair and Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch and Bailey? in the confines of more of an adult product. And I think that is something I'm very intrigued to see. You know, as you talk about these women, and I mean, we've talked about Ronda Rousey turning heel on this show a lot, um, you know, and I think that if they open up the TV 14 world and Ronda Rousey turns heel, there's a lot more you can do with Ronda Rousey as a heel in a TV 14 world, brutalizing people, breaking people's arms, cursing at the audience. You know, I think there's a lot more that they could do. Um, 
You know, so heels especially will benefit from this because as a baby face, you don't curse too much. The general psychology of being a baby face, it remains the same no matter if it's TVG, TVPG, TVM. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's still the same logic that you are, you know, you need to endear yourself to the audience watching. You need to feel relatable. It's all those same factors are still there it's just that you you can add a little cursing and a little blood but for heels it's going to be i think a really wide open world that they can work in and it's gonna be a lot of fun especially when ronda does turn heel when eventually bianca belair turns heel i think that's coming sooner than later as well so there it's going to be a lot of fun and it also makes me wonder from wwe's perspective like they're going to have the very first monday night raw that's a tv 14 they'll probably have a big audience that it'll be a spike because those that lost them their way from wrestling and said ah it became too soft it became this and that which uh, honestly when you look at the last four 14 years there has been some really awesome moments in tv pg i i know that we all kind of crap on it as this family friendly soft kind of kumbaya product but we got a lot of great matches in there i mean notably wrestlemania 25 taker and hbk i mean that's just one example of many so you know we on, you could do a whole show on tv uh, tv pg in 14 years but beyond the first Monday Night Raw that you have, you know, I think that the WWE needs to hook you somehow. They can't just do a whole bunch of kind of just ancillary crap to, to just say, yeah, we're, you know, look, it's TV 14. Here we are. They need to have real storylines that are, again, adult content. But more importantly, families. Are, kid, are, are parents going to still bring their kids? Are, are parents going to still allow their kids to watch this product? I think WWE obviously knows that if they up the, the rating, most, there are some parents, if not the large majority, that have young kids that are they're going to stop allowing them to watch the product. So they obviously know like that, that is one of the drawbacks here. Yeah, and I, that's why I'm wondering why they're actually going to risk this. That's the thing is that like because I think that this would have to be a long term investment, right? Because they drove away so many of, let's say, their old demographic of 18 to 35 year old males. That was their demographic, if I'm not mistaken, ruthless aggression and the attitude era. And you have to imagine that a lot of those guys completely went away, except for like the diehards like you and myself. But like I know so many people, so many friends father-in-law father brother-in-law all these things of guys who they find out i still watch it they're just like oh yeah like i remember it back in the late 90s and early 2000s but yeah that that's not for me anymore and like to get those types of people back in it's gonna have to be a long-standing investment into convincing everyone like no this isn't just gonna be a one-time thing this is how we're going to move forward for the foreseeable future and then there's going to have to be a transition here to, because, like you said, you're a father of two young kids. Like, you're going to have to now start thinking about before you sit down with your kids to watch this product because you don't know if it's ever going to be, like, acceptable or appropriate for them to watch. But I do just think that this is a better way to go down. I just think that wrestling at its peak, it never burned hotter. It was never more popular. The crowds were never more rambunctious as to when it was geared for an adult audience. And, like, look, I just think that for this particular type of entertainment, there is no alternative for adults, for young adults. As opposed to, let's say, children, there are a bunch of alternatives for this type of entertainment. There's no such type of entertainment like WWE. But I just think that for adults, you need that release. And I just think that when it was geared for, let's say, 14-year-olds and up, it was just something that was incomparable. We've never seen it back like it was back then. Like, I remember, like, or I remember whenever I put on, like, an old pay-per-view from, like, let's say 2001 or 2000 or 99 or any of – even 2003 or 2004, and you see how – like rambunctious the crowd is all the signs like you could barely see people from all the 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 what were they bristle boards of people who mm -hmm. just build the signs and i just think that yes it is going to be an investment yes you're probably going to see a dip in viewership while the kids leave and you wait for the adults to come back but i just think that in the long term it is something that's really going to pay off and look history speaks for itself matt you've lived through the attitude era the ruthless aggression era the pg era of the reality era, whatever you want to call it, what eras were the worst in terms of viewership and what eras were the most rambunctious? 
Yeah, I, I mean, there's no question about it that the Attitude Era had the most viewership. They broke the most records. You know, they had like five times, ten times the ratings, TV ratings they did now. And, of course, streaming services cut into those ratings. And you have to be very careful about how you look at TV because TV has evolved in the last 20 years. You know, um, while the ratings are lower, you have to understand there's streaming, there's YouTube. There's, you know, all these things didn't exist. And TV was the only way to get wrestling back then. But I think that... While the TV14 thing will get a lot of fans that maybe fell off excited, and current fans like you and my, you and I that have been around for a while saw that 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 TV14 product had to go through TVPG, and now are excited to see what TV14 brings back. I don't think it's a cure-all for everything though. Like it, it, it the, the thing is with the Attitude Era and the Ruth, Ruthless Aggression is that they had not just a I guess a set of tools that is a lot larger and more expansive because of TV 14, but they had mega stars in that group that that doesn't exist today. You know, like it wasn't just about the TV rating and the, and the blood and the guts and all that. That's fun, but they didn't, you know, we don't have stone cold Steve Austin. We don't have the rock. We don't have undertaker. We don't have Kane. We don't have big show. We don't have triple H. We don't have, uh, you know, uh, well, Goldberg to some people that matters. Brock Lesnar is here and there. You know, we, we don't have those guys. You know, and so that to me is one of the biggest things is still, no matter what the TV rating is, is building stars. That will forever be the best way to continue to make money. And yes, you'll have some viewership fall off, but I, I wonder if it's even going to be a lot because the kids aren't the ones who are, you know, when you look at the ratings, the parents are the ones who are technically the consumer. The kids are the ones, if you have young kids, they're in your house. The parents could still be watching wrestling, and the ratings aren't going to drop because the household is still considered as watching wrestling if the adult still tunes into that channel. Uh, so I don't know if the numbers will really dip too much. I think it'll actually initially spike and then level, uh, slide down and then level off at hopefully an elevated level. So I, I honestly think that uh, it's not just about the rating. It's about building stars, and we don't have an all-star roster like we did in the uh, late 90s and mid-2000s. I... The, here's the thing is that I wonder about what superstars are going to be the most, I guess, able to benefit from the rating change. And I look at a guy like Seth Rollins based on where he's taken his character, because I do feel at times the PG restriction has really kept his character from being able to really take it to that one level too far to be like, oh my god, he really is like a sadistic guy like the Joker. And at times, I love Seth Rollins, but at times, because of the PG confines, I feel like his character could become a bit hokey or a bit immature because there was only so far you could go with it. But now that it's switching to TV-14, what could you expect from Seth Rollins? Mm. Yeah, Seth Rollins. <laughs> you and I are just like the biggest advocates of Seth Rollins every time we do this show, but it's such a – it's a crime of, of uh, you know, unimaginable uh, depth because of what WWE has done with Seth and how many times he should be champion. He should be champion right now. But what he could do, certainly become more vicious – uh, you know, be more violent, definitely, of course, cursing and that kind of thing. But he could take his character to a much more extreme level. We see this kind of obnoxious Seth that's dancing around and his outfits are obnoxious. And I, I do love all of that in a way that makes me hate him, which is a compliment. But he could take it in a, in a much darker direction, not quite edge, but just in a way that maybe instead of joking around and doing his laugh all the time, it could be a much more serious, just kind of just nasty type of person that he is, where he has that side of him that's joking, but also darker, more violent, and just despicable. I think that that's what they could do, where he's out to try to actually hurt people. He's not there to just beat them in a match. He could, you know, they could make him actually a, a guy that is out to hurt the talent. Um, that that's what they could do, and and I think, you know, of course, that's one idea of many. But, yeah, Seth Rollins, I think, is going to be one of the guys that benefits the most. I mean, you could go through the roster and, and make that case, but uh, what do you think? Uh, well, I really do think that for the first part of this is that there are some characters that have been kind of dumbed down to very immature, and Seth Rollins is first and foremost. Because do you not find, even though he's great, there are times that he just co does come off as, like, immature and almost childish because they can't push that TV-14 rating? Or is it just me? Yeah. No, that that is true. Yeah. And I think... So, yeah, go ahead. No, and, like, I even see, like, let's say someone like Bianca Belair, who I really like. I do think the character is starting to get a bit stale. But it's like, 
okay, she's very endearing. She's found a way to make like the most arrogant type of slogan very endearing as well. I think that she's by far the best baby face they've had for quite some time on the women's side, especially after the heel turn of Becky Lynch and after she walked away uh, for when she was pregnant. But I even think someone like uh, like Bianca Belair, it's kind of like the PG restriction has kept her from maybe adding more depth to her character. Because even baby faces at times, you want to see more of a vicious side of them, like a Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock or anything like that. When they would finally snap, there was that vicious side. And I look at someone like Bianca Belair, and again, this kind of ties into what I said earlier about how we've never really see the, seen the women in this confine before in a PG-14 environment a B, or not PG-14 TV-14 because the last time it was like that they were nothing more than objectified and sexualized but something like Bianca Belair I feel like if you were able to take kind of like the shackles off and even like I would I know that like maybe you've been advocating for her to be a heel and me as well but now that they're going to TV-14 I would be really curious to see what Bianca Belair could do with her baby face character and maybe add more depth to it and add more of a vicious side to it because it is going to TV 14. Could you see that with Bianca? There's good. This. Yeah. Yeah. The answer, short answer is yes, I could. I could see that happening where they've reached a limit with what they can do with her baby face character. And I think that's evident right now, which is why I and others have made the case that, that right now Bianca Belair feels like she's, about to turn heel organically. I don't think it's on the on the schedule to have happen. It just the creative as of late for Bianca since WrestleMania has been really really bad, uh, from not talking to sitting at ringside every week to actually kind of coming off obnoxious. The reactions have been very mild, not what they were last year. So yeah, as a babyface though, definitely need to have that edge. Now not everybody needs to be the anti hero like Stone Cold, although. If I was WWE and I was reintroducing TV 14, the very first person I would have out is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Somebody just 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 as like a, a symbolic like the like, here we go. Like, that's what I would do. Have Austin host that raw or something. Hit a, have him hit a stunner on somebody and make it feel kind of like make it make that statement that WWE always likes to talk about. But this would be a real one and have Austin back. That's how I would book this anyway. But uh, Bianca Belair, certainly. Uh, baby faces can now have more of an edge instead of always coming out there and having to be transparently just, you know, just kind of stomach churningly nice and always smiling. And it's like every baby face has to make the, the proclamation when they win a championship that I'm a fighting champion, uh, that I'm not going to back down from any fight. Anybody wants an opportunity, this championship, you know where I am. I think that's foolhardy. I think that's a terrible logic when you think about it, uh, because, I know cowardice is the other option, but it's also disrespecting the championship to say, hey, everybody gets an opportunity at this. But uh, that's another conversation. So, yes, Bianca Belair could benefit from this. I think Bailey, upon her return, could benefit from this. Yeah, how, how, about, how about a, ba a, a heel John Cena? You know, hey, I think well, that'll, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, a heel John Cena. I just think that that for them to do something like that, like he and I believe we've talked about this before that they would literally have to have, like, at least a six-month commitment from John Cena. Yes. That that he would, and not even to say that he had to be wrestling on every Raw and or SmackDown, but he would have to be on WWE programming close to once a week, at least to push his character and develop his character. And I really do think that, like, it would be something to explore, but, like, is John Cena willing to give them that much time. Like, look, I thought that this summer was going to be like another summer of Cena, something that they bu they build and pr publicize or um, not publicize. Uh, well, I'm missing the word in my Mar head. Marketed, maybe? Yeah, marketed. Yeah. There you go. Last summer, the summer of Cena. Mm -hmm. And I thought that he was going to be at SummerSlam, and now he's not even going to be at SummerSlam. I feel like SummerSlam, on a side note, do you feel like SummerSlam is kind of being built up to be kind of a letdown? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it, I'm looking at this card, and I'm like, oh, okay, the main event we knew, unfortunately, you know, eight weeks ago. Uh, so the, the main event is Womp Womp. I mean, we know that mm -hmm. because it's, uh, you know, the same thing we've gotten for seven years. Uh, and yes, Austin Theory's out there, and I think, you know, th th that he's probably going to have a failed cash in. And Roman's eventually going to crawl out of there as champion because he's going to face Drew at Clash at the Castle. Everyone knows this. But uh, so there, that's flat right there. And yet you're looking at the rest of the card, and I'm like, eh, this is okay. Like, the Street Profits and uh, the Usos, you know they're going to have a five-star classic. That's wonderful. But other than that, like, I'm looking at this going, um, maybe you'll get a Bailey return. 
they're trying to build this as the WrestleMania of the summer, but it feels kind of just like just another pay-per-view. I hate to say that, but it kind of does. And it sucks because last year at SummerSlam, they really had a good card. Like, okay, Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg was kind of a letdown, as is every Goldberg type of match. But you had Seth Rollins and Edge in their first installment of their trilogy. You had the main event of John Cena versus Roman Reigns. You had a Becky Lynch return, who I guess I, I guess it depends how you felt about her squashing Bianca Belair, but still a big moment. Brock Lesnar's return. Like, last year, it really felt like, wow, they are really pushing SummerSlam to be the WrestleMania of the summer. And look, you can make the argument that it's the second most important pay-per-view of the year. Obviously, I wouldn't put it ahead of Royal Rumble, but I've heard some people say it's more important than that. And historically, you can make that case because there are big title changes historically at SummerSlam. You know, Brock Lesnar winning his first WWE championship at SummerSlam. The Rock winning the WCW championship at SummerSlam. Uh, The other one is Randy Orton winning his first ever World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam. Historically, SummerSlam has been booked as a pay-per-view that more of the big titles have changed hands because it is kind of like the halfway point en route to WrestleMania. But I just think that, look, they did it really well last summer, but this summer or this year, however you want to say it, well, I think a big part of it, again, is that the world championship picture is being held hostage by Roman Reigns, and that's a big problem. But it also feels like, you know, they didn't really have alternatives. Obviously, Cody Rhodes getting injury, injured really threw a wrench into their plans, but it just feels like a match there, or a pay-per-view, rather, that's really going to feel like a letdown. I hate to say that, but, I mean, yeah, it, it probably will be. But usually when I feel like a pay-per-view is not going to be great, I come out of it thinking, all right, that was better than I thought. And maybe it was the wrestling that was really good, maybe a return I didn't expect. So if we set the bar low, I guess that you know inevi- inevitably allows a higher possibility of coming out of the show feeling better. But don't forget, Edge could be coming back, and actually is, is coming back, and likely before SummerSlam or at SummerSlam. Bailey, I mean, I've been predicting Bailey for like four months now. You'd imagine she's en route to SummerSlam. Um, of Charlotte, we haven't heard much about her. If people care about that, uh, Bray Wyatt, of course, is a dark horse, but unlikely at this point. You know, so there there are some returns that are out there. You're like, okay, this could be fun. Um, but SummerSlam is the the kind of halfway point, although mathematically it's not exact. I look at it for some reason. To me, it's like exactly halfway to WrestleMania, even though it's really not. But uh, match or rather uh, storylines do emanate from SummerSlam to WrestleMania every year, usually. I mean, look what happened last year with Bianca and Becky, and then Roman and uh, Brock. Both of those led storylines all the way yeah. to WrestleMania this year, and I always say that, that, you know, look, not all the time, it's not a golden rule, but a lot of the time, SummerSlam is the unofficial start of potential matches at WrestleMania, where you look and go, okay, this happened at SummerSlam, I can see this being in a video package of where it all started here, and then it leads to WrestleMania, so there is that to look forward to as well. Yeah, I, I just think that SummerSlam historically has been an event that like you kind of turn the page on where you're at in WWE, and I feel like historically again i know i kind of always default back to the ruthless aggression era but like when randy orton wins the first ever world title and that's kind of like the end of the original evolution as we know it as he turns babyface obviously a failed run that Mm -hmm. was pulled the plug on very fast but still the end of kind of like an era you have brock lesnar sending the rock almost like away to hollywood for the first real time and winning the undisputed championship and he kind of becomes the face of the company you have the rock win the wcw championship at two th- at, uh, rest- at SummerSlam 2001 to kind of start the whole rock versus austin leading their respective factions and it just feels like this time or Uh, Two years ago, Roman Reigns returning at SummerSlam to intervene in the Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman match. Last year, you knocked out all the examples from last year's pay-per-view. Or maybe even the start of the Yes movement. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Was that when Triple H screwed him? Exactly. And Randy Orton cashed in Money in the Bank. And that was, of course, that was inadvertent long-term storytelling because we know that wasn't the original plan. But the Yes movement and the eventual build of Daniel Bryan versus Triple H at WrestleMania and then later that night winning the Undisputed Championship against Batista and Orton started all the way back at SummerSlam. And I just feel for this time around, it's just like, so we're just getting Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns for presumably the last time. That's what they're telling us. And no other match really feels that important. 
could you see, and I hate asking this over and over, but as the events get bigger and we get closer to WrestleMania 39 in Hollywood, could you possibly see, even though Drew and Roman's going to happen, you already know what I'm asking, could you possibly mm-hmm. at, see um, you know, The Rock come out, even though Drew and Roman's going to happen at Clash at the Castle? I think that's locked in stone. But I, you know, when you look at this and you're like, well, is there any possibility in front of a stadium of 60,000 people, it's their, quote, WrestleMania of the summer, is there any possibility with Roman after the failed cash in after he beats Brock, he's standing there again and here comes the rock not to do anything to him, but just to kind of maybe stand on stage or stand, stare him in the face and not say anything, not physically do anything just as a symbolic gesture of it's on in about seven months. I could see it. I mean, I think you're the bet you put the best that you're going to stop assuming the rock coming back until he actually does. But if they have The Rock locked in, that I've read some reports that he has given them the green light, that he will give them, he'll clear his schedule for about two months around WrestleMania season. I could see him, you know, just coming out, but like you said, not saying a word, and then we don't see him again until, like, Mm -hmm. Survivor Series. And then, again, we're just like, hmm, what's he doing? And then we don't see him again until the Rumble, and then that's when they're just like, okay, it's all system to go now. Now it's Rock versus Roman. I could see them doing something like that because, look, we've mapped this out how many times. What is the formula when they want to start a program with someone against Roman Reigns? He beats someone. He's standing tall in the ring. He raises the belts. And just as he's about to walk away, some, uh, you know, ex wrestlers music hits and comes out and gets in his face. We saw it with Edge, Cena, Brock Lesnar, twofold. It's like it's just been a tried and true formula so, yes, I could absolutely see that, but not but exactly what you said, not something where he comes down and, you know, hits him with a rock bottom or they brawl or he says anything just that he shows up, stares him down. SummerSlam goes off the air and then we don't see the rock again for another several months. But do I think it's going to happen? I'm not banking on it just because I feel like we've been saying this about the rock for about 12 months now, ever since that they moved away from the pandemic era. But I do think that it's a possibility because, A, you know that they've been pushing hard for Rock versus Roman in Hollywood. And B, I think that this is an opportunity for them to start long term storytelling. Exactly. And they don't have to, like you said, he he goes away for like two, three months. Maybe he puts a tweet out there. Maybe he sends in an Instagram video, something. But that's all you hear from now till about Survivor Series, which is when you can really then start looking at WrestleMania. And that's fine, right? Like this, this could be the beginning of the video package for their build from SummerSlam to, to WrestleMania. And why wouldn't you want this to be as promoted as long and as hard as possible? That This is the match that everyone's been wait, waiting for. This is really the last person that can pull this type of uh, type of story on the on Roman, meaning after he holds up the championship, as you said, the formula has been he holds it up, his music's playing, you think the the show is going to go off the air, and then someone comes out and interrupts. There's nobody left to do that that the fans would really, really pop for besides... Uh, you know, besides The Rock. Now, of course, Seth could do it. You, you have others, but there's nobody bigger than The Rock to do this as as the storyline is, you know, it's waiting there for both men as far as the family aspect goes. You and I don't both don't want championships involved, but circling and kind of tying TV 14 back into this, I think not only would it be a good idea for as long as possible to market this match, but when you, if you have a TV 14 environment with a returning Rock, I think that that is, I mean, that's magic waiting to happen. Yeah, well, because for you, is there a bigger match that you could book between Rock and Roman? Uh, Rock and Brock. I mean, mean, that's an argument to be made. Rock, Brock is, they haven't met since, uh, you know, in 20 years. That's insane. But their last match was 20 years. Rock, Brock would be awesome. I'd like Austin, Brock. That's been oh teased, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And I, I keep watching like that clip from 2004 when uh, the, he was the sheriff at the time and Brock stole yeah. his ATV. Like that's mm-hmm. the closest, the closest we ever got to a rock and, or I'm sorry, Austin and Brock matchup. But I, I mean, I, if I was to say the biggest possible matchup for WrestleMania, that is still at least in the realm of existence, it's probably Austin versus Brock Lesnar, even though Roman rock is a very close second, but that's my opinion. For you, do, I know you've talked about this a lot, but do you think it would be better? Well, I would ask you two things. A, do you think the championship will be involved in Rock versus Roman? And B, do you think it should be? A very easy answer to question two. Hell no. 
Uh, I do not want that championship involved in any form or, or fashion. Do I think it's going to be? Probably, because Vince can't help himself, and he figures that adding more championships to a big match is going to make it bigger and doesn't understand the irony of the fact that adding it subtracts from the, the entire experience of the matchup because, number one, you're taking the focus off of what the most important aspect here is, and that's the family, right? The, who is the true head of the table? That kind of thing. The, the, they could easily pull off of that. They, he could even go back to 2015 when The Rock came out and he got booed associating himself with Roman Reigns in Philadelphia. They could they could pull on that. But to me, if they add the championship, and I think Vince will because he does, I hope he doesn't, but more than likely he will – as he did this year, putting both championships in one match, which is screwing the whole, you know, the entire male roster on Raw, and still is to this day. I think he'll add the championship because he feels that, well, what could be, how can we make it bigger and bigger? And it's like, dude, do you not understand that it also B takes away from the outcome predictability? Like, you know, there's almost no chance of The Rock winning if he puts the championship in that matchup because after WrestleMania, just like Brock Lesnar, just like John Cena, they all go back to whatever they're doing, movies, whatever. They go back into their 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 cubbies and, and they do what they do outside of wrestling. And that's just that's just a fact. So uh, I don't want the championship, but I think Vince will if given the opportunity. And this is not to say that I think the Rock should win. No, like I completely think that Roman Reigns should be the guy to get over, but like do you still not want the little bit of a possibility right. that The Rock could win? Like, I felt the same way about, like, when they did Rock versus Cena 2. And I was just like, well, John Cena's obviously going to win. And that was also twofold because it wasn't just because the championship was involved, but also because they weren't going to make The Rock beat John Cena in two consecutive WrestleManias. It just didn't make sense. And look, I'm not saying that it always has to be unpredictable, but I hate when big level matches are oh so predictable. I cannot stand when that you really have no other option but to come to the conclusion of like, yep, he's winning. I would bet my house on it. Mm -hmm. And that would be a match, especially if Roman's holding the championship. And like you've said, and not to go down a Roman Reigns rabbit hole, but it does kind of feel like Roman Reigns, every single match and every single program he's had, maybe with the exception of Daniel Bryan at Edge at WrestleMania 37 or 38, whatever it was, 37, uh, it's always been like, yep, he's going to win. We know he's going to beat Cena. We know he's going to beat Edge. We know he's going to beat, uh, who was the other guy, Rey Mysterio. We Kevin know he's going to beat Rock, yeah. Kevin <laughs> Owens. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like it's about time where we see Roman Reigns in a storyline where it's not a slam dunk that he wins. I don't know the last time that that was. I mean, it has been, again, it's such a tough feeling. And now that we're talking about all the way to WrestleMania, if if WWE uh, is planning on Rock Roman at WrestleMania and Vince wants the championship involved, well, then didn't we already just tell everyone that Roman is holding the championship for another eight months at least? Like, that's that's how awful this is that he is holding a championship that if you're booking out to WrestleMania, you're like, well, Vince is probably going to want the belt involved, which means you're going to have Roman as champion for eight more months. And at that point, they'll be approaching that thousand day magic marker that I know they want to get to. Now, the one saving grace that they could have, and you, I've said this last time, I think you did too. If they do that and Vince wants the belt involved, I will allow it if, <laughs> because I'm sure he needs my permission, if we, <laughs> are able to somehow sloppily or otherwise get the WWE championship back to raw. If they do that, then have your stupid little run with Roman continue for 8,000 days. As long as there's a belt on raw and Roman is not just like you said, just holding them hostage for, you know, two years now. Uh, well, since WrestleMania more specifically, th then I, I, I won't be as bad. I still won't want any championship involved, but if you're going to have one, just make it the universal and put the WWE championship back to raw. Yeah, I, I really do think that that is the biggest issue here, because as we've talked about, you know, Brock Lesnar kind of was an absentee champion on Monday Night Raw in 2017 as universal champion. But it was always felt OK because you had the WWE championship present over on SmackDown. And I just think that as long as you have one world championship present at all times, it makes that much big of a difference and gives you more leeway with the other championship to be a bit more, I guess, able to put on an absentee guy or a part timer or what have you. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, th there's a lot to dis I mean, this SummerSlam, I'll say, will will speak volumes to WrestleMania. There's always again in quotes, almost always 
drops of WrestleMania seeds being sown at SummerSlam that no, that do, at least in the big, big storylines, that go all the way to WrestleMania. And I think if, if I was to bet, be a betting man in terms of, uh, you know, what are the odds of Rock appearing, I'd say it's like a 1 in 10 chance, you know, that he does come out. I, I think that more likely, if they're doing Rock Roman, he probably won't come till Survivor Series or hell, maybe even Rumble. I mean, if they want to have a short build. But I think if you're going to make this an impactful SummerSlam and you want thing, something for people to remember instead of Roman for the for two years straight holding a championship up, The Rock coming out will make the place absolutely explode, even if nothing happens and they just have a stare down. I want to see, as I'm imagining this happening, of course, Roman Reigns' face is going to be fun, but Paul Heyman, imagine Paul Heyman standing there. The facial expressions he makes I mean, are just priceless. I want to see what, what, what Paul Heyman's reaction is if he hears The Rock's music come out. And I mean, he's, it's, he's such a great actor when it comes to emoting... Uh, uh, emoting, I guess, is uh, the word I was looking for. So uh, anything else as we wrap it up here? No, I guess uh, the one thing that I would ask you is, like, what kind of date would you bet that it goes back to TV 14, like mm. at a latest possibility? Because we know that maybe they've doubled uh, or they've uh, doubled back mm. on it being July 18th, this coming Monday Night Raw. But do you think that there is, like, a hard date that we should expect to see it? I would say... At or shortly after SummerSlam, because if I was WWE and, I, and we made this decision, if you know, if I'm in charge of the company and we've you know had obviously many many meetings about it and discussed the pros and cons of it uh, from a business perspective, which we didn't even talk about the business part of it, but uh, I would say that. I would want to let my audience know, which there's going to be the most eyeballs in your product at SummerSlam. I would say run an ad at SummerSlam or have the announcers make a huge announcement, it should be kind of a big deal to try to bring back those fans. So they should make that decision by SummerSlam to let the fans know, hey, this coming Monday night uh, will be the very first TV 14. It's back to uh, you know more mature content, whatever. So they should probably do it when they have the most eyeballs on the product, not at some random Monday Night Raw in the middle of September or something. So uh, that's what I think. It, it'll at least be decided or announced by SummerSlam when it takes effect. Could be either the Monday Night Raw after, or it could be, uh, you know, in, in a month or two. But as long as they tell people by then, I think that's the best idea. Yeah, I would agree. I think it has to. I think that now the cat's out of the bag. It has to be sooner rather than later. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, definitely. And and uh, one more thing I'll say is I I have my speculation. Or I'm a bit skeptical that this wasn't something purposefully leaked by WWE into the media so that they could get kind of a a little bit of an I guess under the radar focus group or reaction to it while they didn't officially do anything. They put it out there and said, let's see what people do. If, if this gets leaked, what do people feel? How do our sponsors react? What is the general feeling on social media? So it's like they leaked it without, you know, purposely looking like they leaked it to see what the fans do, see what our sponsors do, see what the, what, what our stock price does. Do you think that that that's the last thing I'll ask, but do you think that that's something they did? Or do you think this is genuinely something that they wanted out there? I could see it. I could see them trying to test the waters like, okay, how would people react to it? How many more viewers would we get back? How would the stocks work? Like, how would everybody on a macro scale respond to this? And, you know, when I saw that they already doubled back and said, oh, it's not actually going to be this coming raw. It's just going to be at a later date. I, I started thinking like, oh, my God, here we go. Like, they weren't ever serious about this. This was always just to, like, test the temperature on how it would be. But the fact that Pat McAfee alluded to it on SmackDown, yeah. I think that kind of tipped it off that, like, no, we're going to do this. It just may not be as soon as we once thought. Yeah. The, I mean, the, to me, the, the Pat McAfee comment on SmackDown pretty much solidified it that it's coming and we don't have a date yet. They're probably – and if I was WWE, I would take as much time as I can to figure out, okay, here's TV 14. Let's figure out the storylines. Let's not just have everyone come out with the same storylines and just everyone's cursing because they can. I mean, that that's the worst implementation of TV 14 ever. Use it to your advantage. Be smart with the tools you have now, not just being very kind of shock value, superficial. Oh, let's cuss because we can and let's – have somebody get busted open in you know for in a random match for no reason like they need to be very smart about the implementation and execution of this and i, I hope they're figuring the details out now for whenever the hell it launches but uh all right well very good this is man I, i'm all pumped up for tv 14 now i gotta oh, say me too. i can't i can't now it's, it's not gonna be attitude era you don't have stone cold you don't have all of them 
But uh, I think that it's going to be a much more, as an adult, and, and you too, it's going to be a lot more fun to watch people in a more reality-based environment to uh to have feuds and promos it's gonna be a lot of fun so uh all right well uh guys don't forget to catch anthony every single friday on wwe retro and let everyone know what topic you covered this week yeah i covered uh with my thoughts on that uh, tv 14 but i covered uh, batista's rise to the main event from let's say early 2003 until early 2005 kind of to run parallel with the show that i did last week of john cena's rise to the main event because the early stages of their careers really did run parallel with each other, one on Raw, one on SmackDown, and both uh, reaching the top of the mountain, winning their respective world championships for the first time at WrestleMania 21 in early 2005. And I just think that, uh, you know, Batista's run in the, I guess, the later years of Ruthless Aggression kind of got overshadowed because of what John Cena did and Randy Orton and even a guy like The Undertaker, who kind of got rejuvenated in the later years of uh, Ruthless Aggression, being like a consistent world heavyweight champion. But I think that uh, the run Batista had uh, all the way into probably, I would say, 2006, 2007 was a very good one. And I think that you can make the case that certainly in early 2005, he was even hotter in terms of popularity than John Cena. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he was they, they were the face of SmackDown versus Raw 2005. I remember that, that. It was such a it was a great rivalry. Of course, the screwed up finish at Rumble that brought Vince out where he tore his quads was one of the <laughs> funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, you know, so definitely. Yeah. But but that was a great, you know, definitely a great topic because I don't think Batista is something that and it's someone that a lot of people talk about as he is now 100 percent done. That's somebody I don't ever see coming back to wrestling, even in like a, a one off thing. Uh, he is 100 hundred percent done he said that and I, I believe it so but uh, certainly one of the greatest careers in wwe history hall of famer for sure and uh, everybody go check out the retro show from last week that he did on the rise of batista to the main event and the tv 14 comments so all right well uh thanks anthony so much fun and we will talk next week yeah man looking forward to it take care thanks for listening to the wwe podcast don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time